Oh, George Scipione, the director of the Biblical Counseling Institute of the Reformed Presbyterian Theological Seminary here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Recently was asked a question that I want to address, and I thought you might like to hear the answer. It's drunkenness versus disease, or what about alcohol abuse? And the question comes particularly focused, what about the 12-step approach of AA, or Christian approaches there too? Well, I'd like to uh, first of all say that the biblical approach is much more complicated or complex than AA on one level. On another level, it's much simpler. And we'll come back to that. But four things just to note. Drunkenness is addressed in the Bible. And that's the term that's used. Drunkenness is listed as a deed of the flesh. If you look at the Old Testament, Proverbs 23, verses 29 to 35, uh, very apt description by Solomon of someone who gets drunk and the woes that come from uh, the abuse of drugs. A very, very vivid, very apt. Galatians 5.21, among other deeds of the flesh, lists drunkenness as a deed of the flesh. And so drunkenness is not a disease, it is an expression of human nature apart from the regenerating and sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. That is rooted, secondly, in the heart. Matthew 15, Jesus says in a discussion about eating with unwashed hands, etc., that, that look, what goes into a man does not defile him. What comes out of him defiles him. For out of the heart proceeds murders, theft, etc., Drunkenness is not listed there, but in Galatians 5, where the deeds of the flesh are listed, drunkenness is listed along with these other deeds of the flesh that he mentions in Matthew. It is a heart issue, an expression of a heart that is in rebellion against God, living in unbelief. Therefore, drunkenness is a deed of the flesh that flows out of an unregenerate heart, or for the believer who has been born again. It is a echo of the remnant of rebellion that's still in them. The Bible is very, very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Uh, listen to what Paul says. Paul, who was once a murderer, who has had his life turned around by the grace of God in addressing uh, some different issues, he comes to this conclusion, <clears throat> verses 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, homosexuals, thieves, covetous, drunkards, nor revilers or swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. You were washed, sanctified, justified in the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. You see, Christian conversion breaks with the flesh. It breaks it by giving a new heart, a heart of flesh, as God, uh, almost a play on words. The, the flesh is taken out, and, and a heart that can respond to God is put in to that believer. So there's power to say no to drunkenness. Uh, to be honest, uh, our culture has tried very diligently, honestly, to see if there's any biological connections, Dr. Silkworth said years ago to Bill W. who started AA, it's, it's, a, it's an allergic reaction to alcohol. That's never been proven. Nor are there genetic tie-ups. There's no chromosomal uh, proof at this point that anyone is predisposed, let alone has to become a drunkard. The 12-step approach is based on conflicting. It's a disease and yet moral accountability. But there's no sin involved. You may hurt others. You need to make amends. That's good. But there's never repentance towards God, faith in Jesus Christ, and living as a disciple. To sum up, um, the challenge is that the 12-step approach, friends, is thoroughly humanistic. And if you want to study that history, you can study the history of AA, from, uh, get it from them, or if you want to get it from us, the uh, marriage and family 
counseling syllabus and the advanced syllabus has work in it by Dr. Andrew Peterson, who used to teach psychology uh, up the road at Grove City some years ago. And he examines the history of AA and shows that it is really not a biblical construct. You see, God exists to get people sober in AA. That's what it really amounts to, not to make them holy. Sobriety, not sin, is the core issue for AA. Yes, there's some faint echoes of Christianity, group involvement and accountability, but it certainly is not God said. There's some good things in AA, but it really is a substitute for the church. The biblical model, as I said, is less complex. Three steps. Repentance, faith, obedience. Much more complicated in that it depends on the supernatural work of God in washing, sanctifying, and justifying people through the work of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And the church, not an independent 12-step group, is the place where people are made holy. I hope that this challenge is, uh, is sensible to you. And if you want to interact with me, you can contact me at gscipione, S-C-I-P-I-O-N-E, at rpts.edu, or call me at the seminary. 412-731-8690. Uh, May the Lord bless you and help you to think biblically about this and all other matters to the glory of God.